Hi and welcome to the second episode of Greyheads, the conversations that will hopefully give you a nugget of information or advice that you can take away and help you in your career. Something that will encourage you to take action, whether that is with a project at work, or maybe how you network with people, or take direct action like getting a new job. This week for the second episode, my guest is with Karen Strang. Through a mutual course that we're both on, Karen and I have recently been acquainted and I just loved this conversation, hearing about Karen's life and her professional background. Living on the lakeside in the rural forests of northeastern Ontario in Canada, Karen has worked in communications and international relations, which has spanned over 30 years. She offers strategic training sessions at workplaces and in, in, in educational institutions. Karen was a Director of International Relations at two of Ontario's universities for 20 years. Along with her professional career, Karen has also held various community roles. For example, she is the founder of the Professional Women Newcomers Network, which assists new immigrants to integrate into the Canadian communities and workplaces. To her friends, colleagues and communities she engages with, Karen is also known as The Connector. In March 2020, she received the, the Paro Changemaker Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I do hope you enjoy this conversation and you get that little something from it. If you like what you hear, can I please ask, ask that you like this video and you share it with your network. Enjoy. Hi, good morning, Karen. How are you? Fine, thank you, Paul. Nice to be with you. Thanks. So, Karen, listen, we've we've met through uh, a, a mutual uh, acquaintance, and I, I've I'm getting together uh, people who are experienced in their careers, and uh, the idea of the interviews is for someone, the viewer, to listen to what we're talking about, and it's asked and answered. 10 questions, 10 answers, and the idea is to learn from your experiences. And, and that's the idea, is the viewers to learn from your experiences. So before we jump into the questions, could you just give a brief intro on yourself and, and yeah, tell everyone who you are? Yeah, gladly. My name is Karen Strang, and I am starting to get those gray hairs. Uh, <laughs> I I'm not have, going to me. I'm bald. So yeah. <laughs> I live in Canada, north of Toronto, um, in the forests outside of a city near North Bay. And I've uh, lived here about 17 years. And mm. we had an opportunity to build our dream home on a lake here. And our children are up here. Oh, and that our, sounds lovely. our children, too. So we have grandchildren here, too. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's the beauty part of why we exist on earth is uh, mm -hmm. for our children and grandchildren, but we also need to give purpose to others. And that has a lot to do with what drives me in the work that I'm involved in, which I call intercultural relation. Mm -hmm. um, so I've worked at a couple of universities. I've uh, now in the last six years developed my own business. Uh, to focus on the kinds of things that really drive me and that I'm passionate about. Yeah, brilliant, fantastic. I, and is your is your role international, or is it all based in Canada? Actually, I've had wonderful experiences uh, in working with the universities. I've traveled to over thirty five countries, so wow. I've worked on developing projects. Uh, exchange programs for domestic and international students and faculty and researchers to be mobile and share ideas and concepts, um, welcomed hundreds of international students to uh, Canada as well to study in Canada. And a major focus of my business now called Educulture is that I am preparing international students to study both academically uh, the way that we do it here in Canada and in many other Western countries, as well as how do they manage and integrate into our cultural systems and considering life in the last year, this is all delivered online yeah. and it will help teach them how to be effective online learners because I really think that's the future of everyone with yeah. lifelong learning. 
Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. I agree with that. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks very much. Let's jump into the questions. So, 10 questions. Yep, 10 questions. Let's start number one then. For some reason, for some people, sorry, they plan their careers maybe by going to uni, selecting a profession such as doctors or others. Quite often they may have fallen, went to uni but fallen into a different path to what they've originally, originally chosen. Okay. Did you ever plan your career or did you ever fall, just sort of fall into it? And in reflection, what is the advice you would give on planning your career? Okay. Well, initially, I mean, when you're 18, leaving high school and entering college or university, you think, well, what do I love to do the most? Well, for me, sports was my passion, passion, mm -hmm. but also the connection with people and planning. I was quite an organizer from a young age. Um, when I was in grade eight, I started a student council without the without the principal's permission. Okay. So I quickly became known as a change maker back then. Yeah. <laughs> so then anyway, I went into recreation leadership at a college level uh, here in North Bay. Actually, I moved to North Bay to take this course. And I worked as a wellness and fitness instructor for about six years. So I thought that's my life path. But then things happen in life. And I think that's a message that's going to be consistent throughout my discussion with you, Paul, is that there was a recession. No mm -hmm. longer did people have money to spend on recreational activities. Yeah. That, that was back in the early 80s. Yeah. So what do we do? We pivot. We change. So I moved to another city, fell back on my secretarial skills. I was a very good typist in high school. Okay. And I took a job at a university. And um, at that university, I had the opportunity to move through different departments and obtain a degree in communication studies because I wanted to work with people. For me, it's yeah. about building relationships and connecting with people. Yeah. So I pursued that and worked at that institution for 18 years. And through osmosis, started working with international students there at that mm -hmm. university, and they created an international department. So I was the first one hired there. Yeah. And after that, I transitioned and came back to the North Bay region so that I could pursue a director position in international relations at Nipissing University here. Okay. I did that job for 12 years. And of course, through all that time, I developed all kinds of skills, those travel experiences, firsthand experiences, as I mentioned, as well as some constructive training. And I did then a postgraduate uh, certificate program in intercultural studies from University of British Columbia. And in doing that, that helped to connect me with the leaders, the movers and shakers in the international relations business around the world. Yeah. And again, the confidence to share my knowledge and be that teacher, you know, from being a fitness instructor to becoming say, a cultural instructor. And that's what I still do today. Yeah, exactly. So, so but the thing there is you pivoted. Uh, so you changed. You absolutely changed. Yeah. That's fine. And you need right. to, because life throws you curveballs and you gotta be ready. You got and, to be ready. Uh, you know, I had to do this again last year in pivoting my business and adding a new mm -hmm. division where I could develop and train uh, people, provide yeah. supports for people online. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What's your view towards member, uh, membership, mentorship? Mm -hmm. I'll put my teeth back in, mentorship. Uh, yeah. Throughout your career, have you ever had a mentor? Uh, or have you ever been a mentor? Uh, what's mm -hmm. your reflections on that? And what's your thoughts on mentorship? Mm -hmm. I think mentorship can take so many different forms. Uh, sometimes it is guidance yeah. by some, it, to me, I mean, bottom line, it's guidance by, from someone you trust mm -hmm. and someone that has the similar values that you would like to emulate, right? Yeah. So okay. my parents were great mentors to start with, a, a good family upbringing. I was very fortunate, uh, strong uh, values. Um, mm. You work today, you play after you've done your work. That was yeah. my dad growing up on a farm. Yeah. And um, then 
as I grew into the work world, I would say that, well, certainly there were some other teachers at school, but a woman that I worked with at Wilfrid Laurier University, it was the manager of the payroll department. And just the way she worked well with people, uh, I grasped and, and to this day, obviously, recommend the values that she taught mm. as a leader that has the oversight, the expertise to manage, but has such great connections with her staff, with the people she works with. And when there's a tough job, she would roll up her sleeves and just roll in on the very basic kind of skill. Mm. Um, you, you, you admired that. Admired that. Yeah. Like she was so authentic. And to me, more recently in, in the, my last few years in pivoting and creating my own entrepreneurial business, mm. uh, I have become great friends as well as colleagues with a couple of people I would call mentors, life okay. coaches, uh, people who deal with challenges and grief. Mm. And these folks have been so helpful to re really look at what you're doing, is it right for you? And how do you follow your heart? Yeah. And that's what I would call is a good mentor. Yeah, fantastic. And have you ever mentored anybody? Has anyone looked up to you? And yes, quite a few people actually. Yeah. Um, many international students, obviously, because yeah. as as recent as a month ago, I still I was teaching international students mm. through a local college. I teach, teach an international business course. Yeah. And uh, so I'm often mentoring students in even just how they get along uh, with others, communication. Yeah. There's a whole program that I do training in called social cultural competency training. Mm -hmm. And that is helping newcomers integrate and adapt to the new space that they're living in. Yeah, so okay. I'm definitely mentoring in the training that yeah. I'm doing, but often people will just call me up and say, you know, um, you know, they said, somebody suggested to contact you, Karen, because you've been through this. What yeah. would you suggest? And, and so, yes, a lot of it is just connecting people with connecting each other. People. Yeah. And it's something you enjoy. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes. It, it's a good feeling. Um, if someone walks away with a tidbit of something, whether it was a something in a class that I taught or whether it's a conversation we had, and they said, oh, I never thought of doing things that way. Maybe I, yeah. I'll consider that next time. I think that would help others. And bottom line is, you, how does it make you feel? You're not doing it for the recognition. You're mm. mentoring from the perspective of really genuinely caring about someone and wanting to help them succeed. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. Next question then is throughout your professional life uh, and personal life is what values do you live by? Truth, honesty, integrity, authenticity, it really bugs me when I meet someone and they're really, really nice. And then they want to sell me something and I choose not to buy. And then all of a sudden, well, thanks. And they hang up the phone or yeah. whatever the situation is. Like be authentic about yeah. something. If you really want to connect with people and, and gosh, we need to do that so much more, Paul. Yeah, now okay. with our, you know, our, our soft skills in social yep. communication has diminished over the last year more than it already yeah. was. Yeah, and, try, and trying to build relationships online, you know, and not in person uh, is very difficult. So, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and the values that you've just mentioned there, is that something you, you did? Did that come naturally to you or did you consciously have to think about it? Uh, yeah. I think it's an evolution. It's a journey. Yep. Life is a journey. It yep. never ends. There's always yep. goals we set and that's how we reach them. Mm -hmm. But there are steps that you have to take to, to reach those goals. And the more life experiences you have and the more people you meet who are different than you, mm -hmm. different in their values, attitudes and behaviors, right? And that's why I love intercultural work is because I'm meeting people from all over the world, whether it be online or in our space or in their space. Yeah. And there are reasons why people do what they do. Mm. And it's important for us to ask questions. 
And I think I've become a much better listener in the latter 10 years of my life compared to before that. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. The in your career then, how would you describe your style, your brand? Uh, what were the benefits of that? And uh, I did give you a list of different styles and on my blog, one of my blogs is leadership styles and stuff. But, but how would you describe your style how, in your own words? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my style, I think, is what you see is what you get. Mm. I try to be authentic, using that word again. Um, being interested in people mm. and seeing the value in one person and another. And actually, I'm literally called the connector. There's so many people in different women's groups that I'm involved in and that, that yeah. say, Karen, you're the connector. You're always saying, oh, I know someone who does this. I'll put you in touch. And then there's, yeah. a, there's an email invitation and then there's a connection. And I just did this from a webinar two weeks ago that I was right. in and there were three amazing women. They connected with something I said, contacted me on LinkedIn. Now we're in regular communication. I've connected them with two other people that I know that resonate with their work. Mm -hmm. So the six of us are going to get together next week for a Zoom chat. Fantastic. So I, yeah. I guess I'm the connector. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And change maker, change maker, change maker too, maker because too. Yeah. I think you've got to be resilient and move with the tides. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, so moving on from that, then, so similar vein is personal brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know what people perceive of you. Uh, how important to, is that in someone's career? How important is it to you, uh, so that you've got people have the right perception of you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about personal brand? I think a personal brand is something that should happen organically in okay. order to be authentic and for people to be their true self rather than something you work on. Yeah. Right? So to start with that, I my example I just recently gave you by something I said during a webinar it mm. made a connection with someone. To me, there was a heart or an authentic connection that occurred there. Uh, I believe in heart energy and spirituality and things like that very much. And if you're in the right place at the right time, you'll meet the right people. Positive begets positive. You connect. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's probably one of the things that comes through with me uh, is that I'm willing to give to be that person of service, that caregiver. Mm. It's just natural. And uh, I don't know if you know a lot about meanings of words. My mother named me Karen. The meaning okay. of Karen is to care. Right. And okay. I never even realized that till I was in my 30s, you know. Right, okay. um, so that I find kind of interesting. But I, I don't know that anyone is actually ever an, an expert in anything that they do. Again, mm. a life is a journey. It's a continual growth. And you sometimes have to set baby steps yeah. to, to make it move. And especially when you're challenged with having to change jobs, being let go from an organization, yeah. which actually occurred to me um, with a major change management when 16 people were gone in one day and we all went, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. So how do you change your life and be how ready you to change move and on? be ready to move on? Exactly. Yeah. Moving on then, as you said there, what is the hardest time in your career and what did you learn from that? In hindsight, well, I, what action would you have taken to help the situation? Sometimes you can't help the situation because probably one of the most difficult times for me is what I was just mentioning when I was let go from a university. Yeah. And uh, it was a shock to all 16 directors. It was a major company issue. They had to slash and burn we mm. we were not salary we were, we were salaried rather making good money middle management but we were not unionized so we were easier to get rid of and it was right. a big chunk of change that you know yep. for the institution so there was no warning uh you get met at your door and walked out and that felt so 
uh, disingenuous, just so rude, so mean. So I, I was really hurt. Yeah, you go through a range of emotions, don't you? Oh, yes. When I had just been, I just come back from a major trip and a, a Canadian conference where I presented three times at this conference. And then I was met at my door to be walked out. Mm. I had been the face of the institution internationally for 12 years. And then that happened. Yeah, that's, so it was that's hard. Like, oh, God, it just, somebody took that rug and pulled it out from under me and I hit my head. Mm. And within five hours of ranting and raving at home, and uh, <laughs> I sat down and made a list of what I was going to do next. Yeah. I had to move on. So I, uh, you got to be flexible. Mm. And things fluctuate. You don't know what's going to happen. So you've got to be ready to flex and flux as life yeah. goes yeah. on. Life goes and on. that's when I decided to become an entrepreneur, Paul, and create my mm. own business, do my things, my timing work when I want to work, even though being an entrepreneur requires a lot of work. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but the idea that I am now in charge of my destiny yes. and I can say no when yes. I feel I need to say no. And perhaps there were other times when I needed to say no and stand my ground. Mm -hmm. But when you're working for someone, uh, especially a large corporate, you feel that you must follow the rules, follow yes. the protocols, even though it's not where your heart is. And, and that's why I say I Great had a lot of self discovery in the last five years about spirituality, about what mm. moves me, what, what gives me energy. And the latest thing is, is something I was listening to by a psychologist that said, say the word fantastic. And it's amazing what it does, what it does. for yeah. you. All the yeah. energy is it must be something about that fantastic, like all the all the consonants jumping out together. Yeah. I don't know. But I used it on the golf course the other day. And every time I went fantastic, when I hit that ball, whew, <laughs> did it go? I must it try that then. I must try that the next time I play golf. <laughs> yes, it works. It works. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's good. What did you say? It's good. I, how important, I mean, I think you've answered this, but, but in case you've got anything else to add, how important is networking? I mean, your job is, is networking. You've called yourself the connector. Yeah. yeah. But, but, to people, but people out there, I, some, for some people, I think networking becomes quite natural. Mm -hmm. And some people dread it, absolutely dread it, yeah. Uh, oh, so, 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 what's your, so what's your views on networking? Well, it's obviously helpful to be an extrovert, right? Mm. So an introvert has more, it's, it's more of a job to mm. put yourself out there, do those, you know, elevator pitches, they call them, those quick, yeah. you know, connections. And I'm just a social butterfly, always been all my life. So for me, it comes naturally but there is value in networking. And what is the substance of the conversations that you're having with people? Mm -hmm. And how is that valuable? Because yeah. it, I, this is particularly of interest to me when I've been uh, teaching international students from countries like India and China and mm -hmm. Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, places like that, that are a little more monocultural societies. Yeah. And, and often, um, you know, it, it's hierarchical as well. And I am helping and working with them on communication and communication styles. If you're going to work in international business, yeah. how do you need to be able to communicate with people yeah. from an individualistic type of society where the individual's perspective is valued and you don't have to just stick with the team way of doing things. Yeah. So in those kinds of ways, yes, there I'm doing my mentoring thing again, I guess, but sharing with them how important it is to network and how to begin to network and feel comfortable. So I've taken a few of those students under my wing over the last five years and, and and they, one young woman in particular from the Philippines, and she was did an internship with me last year. So she shadowed me and my work, everything that I was doing. So I would bring her to a chamber of commerce meeting 
yeah. um, where she would meet business people in the community. And then I we would start out by some training before she got there because she was very shy personality as well. Yeah. But so she came up with her little elevator speech as a um, as a student still who was going to be graduating. But how do you first meet someone you've never known? Because she was wanting to be able to get a job within a year right? Yeah, when she yeah. finished her studies. So she needed to develop these networking skills. Um, and again, I just said from the from the very beginning, you need to think from your heart. What yeah. would you like people to know about you that might help you develop a relationship with them? Yeah. And it might be a relationship that's lasting, or it might be a relationship for today's meeting where you had yeah. a really good conversation about something. Think about something that you like to do, not just yeah. business, not just business. It's got to yeah. be about you as a person. About personal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. How does uh, someone keep progressing up in their careers? What would be your top advice for doing that? And what I mean, what I mean by that is progressing upwards is not necessarily promotion. It could be they just want to be fulfilled by doing a certain type of work. Yeah. I, so, what's your advice on how to progress in your career? <clears throat> seeking advice from others mm. is one someone who that. may yeah. yes your colleagues who are yeah. at the same level how do you do things or how did you deal with this and be open and willing to listen to how someone mm. else managed a situation yeah on the other hand it could be a superior or someone else um for example i did some training called um customer service training for personal support workers, right? Okay. PSWs. So yeah. these are uh, were individuals who got their PSW certificate, but, pro but many of them came from occupations as truck drivers, as um, house cleaners, uh, other yeah. kinds of occupations where they didn't have a lot of uh, education yeah. other than that particular course. But so I brought in the business perspective and said, you have to think of all your clients, your patients, whether you're caring for them in the hospital or in their homes, think of them as your customer. So yeah. what is your persona? What are you, um, what do they think of you when you walk in the door? Yeah. How do you greet them? How do you meet them? Um, do you listen to them? Or do you just get on, do your job, walk out the door? That's not good customer service, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of turned it into something, your question into something with an example, because they had so many aha moments. They just hadn't thought about doing things a different way. Different way. Yeah. Or realized their value, their value to their own company, yeah. their value um, to those precious lives that they were supporting and it might have been bathing people in very private mm -hmm. situations that yep. might have been uncomfortable for the, the client or patient but how can you use your voice to talk through things or sing a song or what are other ways that you can do things yep. so the, I think in bottom line is explore and find explore, the people yeah. who can give you ideas for different ways of doing your job yeah Perfect. Thank you. I mm -hmm. some sometimes a person can take a stretched assignment, and what that might mean is uh, they put their hand above the parapet and say, "I would like to do that task." It's something that they've not necessarily done, mm -hmm. but they want to try and utilize skills that they may have or try and stretch themselves. And the idea is to try and be noticed to, to take on more work or to, to be thought in a different way by senior uh, management or leaders yeah okay. what, what's your opinion on that on taking stretched assignments I again people do it for different reasons as you've said and mm. sometimes it might be necessary for them to show that they're willing to go a step further in order then to be considered for promotion later on yeah. so it might be um 
a purposeful driven initiative yeah. they take on that way because yeah. they do want to make more money they want to climb the corporate ladder or they want yeah. a new opportunity so there could be different reasons for doing it we got to I think it's, um, again, it's about a personality. It's about who you are as an individual. And the bottom line for me is if you're willing to do it, do your best. Do your best. So yeah. if you feel I, you I'm, can do it, yeah. go for it, right? For it. And yeah. willing to stretch yourself. And I am all the time, but I have yeah. been the last year for sure with COVID challenges and having to pivot my business and, yeah. and people say, well, could you do that? And I would go, uh, sure, I can sure. do that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to write down notes and I'm research and I'm going to call people and yeah. say, okay, I got to pull this together and yep, I'm doing it. Yeah, and actually exactly. our respiration series that my colleague and I are doing with Educulture right now this summer is exactly that. We were asked, yeah. could you take on this initiative? And we said, yes. Yeah. And then we were doing it. Good. So, so yeah. So, this, so, yeah. All right. Yeah. And finally, then, what I call is gotchas, and that might be a, an English okay. term or a Scottish term. Yeah? But what, what, what my question is... What, what are the things not to do in your career? What are the things that you've experienced? You just think, you know what, I've done this and what a mistake it was. Just do, you know, I don't do this. Yeah. So what are the, what, have you got any gotchas out of your career that you just think, what an idiot, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, an overall encompassing one is if you don't follow your heart. And in the last yeah. five years, my entrepreneurial business, I am now. So yeah, to okay. me, that's the, I, I wasn't always following my heart. That's right. true. And often if you're working um, with corporate businesses, it's again, following the rules of others when you mm. really don't feel it. Yep. You don't feel it's what something that you're doing is right. Yeah. Or, you know, you just. It, it grinds against you. Oh, the line. Yeah. Yeah. So follow and your heart. It, yeah. And it, because it, follow your heart is what I would say is what you've got to do. The gotcha or the difficult times is for me was when I had to bite the bullet and just do what someone else told me I needed to do, but I didn't believe in what I was doing. And I did not feel, and I come back to that, what we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. I did not feel my authentic self Yeah, because okay. I was not following my heart. So You're following your heart to do it. Yeah. yeah. Fine. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Ask You're and right. answer. Ten questions, ten answers. So thank you very much. Well, and my best. It was fun. Thanks, Paul. They're very well, intriguing questions. It makes you really think about yourself. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, what we'll do now is uh, I'll stop recording. That'll be it. Thanks, okay. Karen. Thanks. Hi. So before you go, thanks very much for watching the video. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and you got that nugget of information for you to take forward within your career. If you like what you've seen, please like and share it because it really does help. In the intro video, I talked about taking action. Well, at Two Saints, we offer a career coaching programme. The programme is designed to help individuals truly learn about themselves, truly have a deeper understanding of their strengths and their weaknesses. It will allow you to make the right goals for you to take forward into your career, to allow you to get that job that you've always wanted, seek that higher salary that you've quite truly deserve. If you think career coaching is something that you'd like to learn more about, follow the link that's on the page, sign up to our webinar, which we run on a Tuesday and a Thursday, which gives you a good overview of the programme and why career coaching is good for you. Cheers now. Bye.